We're gonna be drawing a mouth today and we're gonna be doing a closed mouth. There is a video on my YouTube playlist for drawing faces that has an open mouth. Um, if you are wanting to try that out, it's a, a lot more difficult, but um, it's up to you. So we're gonna start with something, a circle method that has you use just circles to get the shape of the mouth. So what you're going to do is you're gonna start with circles, three small circles, um, well, depending on the size of your mouth. And remember again that you're drawing very lightly because you're going to be erasing these. These circles will completely be removed. They're just to give you kind of a guideline to how to place your mouth. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring in that Cupid's bow, the top of the, the lips. And this shape is however you want it to be, however deep or, or small you want that kind of V-shape to be. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the center part of my mouth. So coming, this is gonna be the top lip. And it's gonna follow that curve of the top circle. And then I'm going to allow it to come across, however wide you want your mouth to be, which when we actually get to talking about the proportions of the face, your mouth should go, should be from pupil to pupil. So the width should match up with the pupils of the eyes. As a general rule, that of course is not true for every person. Um, and then I'm gonna be taking from my Cupid's bow, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my mouth, my top lip across to where I just put the end of my lip from the center. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. The bottom lip is going to wrap around those two lower circles. So remember, the circles are gonna determine how big your lips are. If you want narrower lips, you can always fix that by either doing smaller circles or decreasing the size of the lips after you have gotten the basic shape of them. Because this is a pretty full set of lips and if you're doing something like a gentleman in your picture, then you might want a thinner set of lips. It's totally up to you. Um, once you're done with that, you're going to erase those circles. So again, they should have been done very lightly because you do not want them to show up after. And you can edit however you want. I feel like that top lip is very rounded, so I'm actually gonna shrink it down just a little bit. But at least it gives me the idea of how that shape should be, even if you wanna make it a little less circular, rounded. Okay, so there's my general shape of my lips. And again, edit anything you want. Make the lips smaller if you want. So for example, if I want this to be a little more of a narrow lip, just make a line that goes parallel with what you just did. And then get rid of the outside. Right, I just made my lips smaller. Now we're gonna get into shading and again, I would use that overhand grip to create your shading. And what I would do is I would kind of bring a little darker shading into the edges. And we're gonna start with the top lip. So I'm just coming in from the edges and creating kind of a darker value. Don't go too, too dark at first because you can always build up. And then I'm gonna go just a little bit lighter toward the center. And 
And then I'm going to go ahead and blend. And then I'm going to start developing the bottom lip here. Um, I do want to darken up my line that goes through the middle of my two lips to show their separation. I want to darken that a little bit so it uh, stands out a little more. And then on my bottom lip, I'm going to do kind of the same thing. Come in a little darker from the corners. And then a little lighter toward the center. And again, blending. And don't forget as you're blending that you might have to go in and clean up a little around your edges, and that's fine. You don't want to have a really obvious line of your lips, so you can even erase any distinct lines and replace that a little with shading as well. So I just took out the line at the bottom of the lip. So once you have that basic layer down, we need to go in and really develop it a little more. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, and I would give kind of an end to your lips so it looks kind of like where it creases back into your cheeks almost. So kind of give an end to your lips. You don't have to do that, but it's just an idea. Um, and then you're going to come in with a darker value again. We're building up our value. And the reason we're going darker at the edges is that that sits back further on your face uh, than the front of your lips. And as you come to the front of your lips, I'm going with a lighter value here, um, it's got more light reflected on it. So that's why we're keeping that a little lighter. And then for the bottom lip, we're actually going to keep it a lot lighter than the top. Um, but we still do want to have it darker at the edges. And kind of show like a reflection at the center of the lips a little bit. So you can see I'm kind of coloring with a curve too because my lip is curved. So I'm coloring with a curve, leaving a little bit of a lighter area at the center. And I really want to, again, come in and make sure that that center area is clearly outlined so I don't lose the separation of the two lips. And then I'm going to come in and kind of outline a little around the outside just to give it a little more definition. Just keep playing with the shading until you feel like it's looking more three-dimensional, adding the darker to the outside. Don't forget to darken up that line inside. And if you even want to lighten up the middle a little bit to appear more of a reflection, you can do that. 
So something like that. And I'm going to come in and just blend again. If you want, you could practice coming in and kind of blending around it. Um, we should probably add in the part above the lip as well. So right between where the cupid's bow is, you can kind of do a little shading. And then you want to leave just a little bit of a gap. To create the part above the lip. And just define it. This is what's right under your nose, which is actually the very last, last spot that your face fuses together when you are being formed comes from behind and joins together and that's the very last uh, area that it fuses. Interesting fun fact. Um, and then if you want you can practice very lightly shading around the mouth. You can even practice giving a little bit of shadow under the under the lips here because it kind of casts a shadow um, from your lips down onto the skin below. And again, just remember you're practicing your blending. Again, if you want to do an open mouth, I would try out the video that's on the playlist on my YouTube channel, um, Drawing Faces, and look for the video that talks about drawing an open mouth. If you want to start trying to put all the pieces together, I would practice the lips at least a few times. Um, and then you could practice starting to put your pieces together. We haven't talked yet about proportion and how to line everything up with one another. We're gonna focus on that on Monday, um, just to make sure everything is mapped out properly, and then we'll be getting started on our actual uh, final portrait, which will just be to create a face of anyone that you want. Could be an actual person, or it could just be just a person in general but showing me that you can create an actual face, realistic style face, using proportion and our values and the correct scale, which just relates to proportion and how everything is placed together.